The minstrel boy to the war has gone in the ranks of death. You will find him. So goes the old Irish song. Frank was a minstrel boy, one of Ireland's finest. As a humble high school English teacher, for years he fought the war against ignorance and stupidity, pried open windows onto the world of imagination, and changed the lives of thousands of American young people. With the publication of Angela's Ashes, he changed us all, flinging open the window of truth onto the Ireland of his childhood, traumatized by poverty, alcoholism, and emigration. He did it with humor, wit, compassion, and enormous courage. His passing on is a great loss for us, for Ellen, for Malachi, for the entire family, for the students he inspired, the readers worldwide he delighted, and the community of artists and writers, amongst whom he was a shining beacon of hope and possibility. And although he has gone home now, the minstrel boy, with his wild harp slung behind him, his songs and the way he sang them will live in our hearts forever. So, Sla Noalia, safe home. This is the joyous piece. Blowing out his rare moustache, Mr. D.C. halted at the table. First, our little financial settlement, he said. He brought out of his coat a pocketbook bound by a leather thong. It slapped open, and he took from it two notes, one of joined halves, and laid them carefully on the table. Two, he said, strapping and stowing his pocketbook away. And now, his strong room for the gold. Stephen's embarrassed hand moved over the shells heaped in the cold stone mortar, whelks and money cowries and leopard shells. And this, walled as an emir's turban. And this, the scallop of St. James. An old pilgrim's hoard, dead treasure, hollow shells. A sovereign fell, bright and new, on the soft pile of the tablecloth. Three, Mr. D.C. said, turning his little savings box about in his hand. These are handy things to have, see? This is for sovereigns, this is for shillings, sixpences, half crowns, and here, crowns, see? He shot from it two crowns and two shillings. Three twelve, he said. I think you'll find that's right. Thank you, sir, Stephen said, gathering the money together with shy haste and putting it all in a pocket of his trousers. No thanks at all, Mr. Deasy said. You have earned it. Stephen's hand, free again, went back to the hollow shells, symbols, too, of beauty and of power. A lump in my pocket. Symbols soiled by greed and misery. Don't carry it like that, Mr. Deasy said. You'll pull it out somewhere and lose it. You just buy one of these machines. You'll find them very handy. Answer something. Mine would be often empty, Stephen said. The same room and hour, the same wisdom, and I the same. Three times now. Three nooses round me here. Well, I can break them in this instant if I will. History, Stephen said, is a nightmare from which I am trying to awake. From the playfield, the boys raised a shout. A whirring whistle. Goal! What if that nightmare gave you a back kick? The ways of the Creator are not our ways, Mr. D.C. said. All human history moves towards one great goal, the manifestation of God. Stephen jerked his thumb towards the window, saying, That is God. 
Hooray! Hi! Woohoo! What? Mr. Deasy asked. A shout in the street, Stephen answered, shrugging his shoulders. Mr. Deasy looked down and held for a while the wings of his nose tweaked between his fingers. Looking up again, he set them free. I am happier than you are, he said. We have committed many errors and many sins. A woman brought sin into the world. For a woman who was no better than she should be, Helen, the runaway wife of Menelaus, ten years the Greeks made war on Troy. A faithless wife first brought the strangers to our shore here. MacMurrah's wife and her leman, O'Rourke, Prince of Breffney. A woman, too, brought Parnell low. Many errors, many failures, but not the one sin. I am a struggler at the end of my days, but I will fight for the right till the end. For Ulster will fight, and Ulster will be right. Stephen raised the sheets in his hand. Well, sir, he began, I foresee, Mr. Deasy said, that you will not remain here very long at this work. You were not born to be a teacher, I think. Perhaps I am wrong. A learner, rather, Stephen said. And here, what will you learn more? Mr. Deasy shook his head. Who knows, he said. To learn, one must be humble, but life is the great teacher. Shanae.